Welcome back to another week of Dodger baseball, one that is full of unexpected clutch moments from a certain player. But first, let's review the games. In the midst of a winning streak, the Dodgers had the Brewers in town and kept that streak going by sweeping them in a three-game series. But then, after 11 wins in a row, the team finally lost one when the Marlins came to town for another three-game series. Thankfully, the Dodgers won the next two games to avoid a post-winning streak losing streak. Those two games also ended up being a doubleheader because of a hurricane that was hitting California. Never thought I'd see a Dodger game get rescheduled because of a hurricane, but here we are. Looking at the pitching, you'll see who was to blame for that one loss. Tony Gonsolin looked absolutely horrible out there and gave up 10 runs in 3.1 innings. After the game, Roberts put him on the injured list and heavily implied that it would be the end of Tony's season. Apparently, he's been dealing with injuries all year, which would explain why he's been so much worse than last year. Or it's just the natural regression that some people were predicting, but as a Tony supporter, I don't want to believe that. It's sad to see Catman go, but the good news is that this week saw the return of Ryan Pepio, a guy who has been out so long that you might have forgotten he existed. But he certainly didn't forget how to pitch, giving us five innings with only one run on the first game of the doubleheader. And Lance Lynn looked even better than his last three starts, giving us seven scoreless innings this week. Urias continued to look good with seven innings and only one run. However, all of this was overshadowed by one man. And if you haven't been following this week, you're going to be shocked to hear me say it, but Austin Barnes was on fire. On Thursday, when Lance Lynn was killing it on the mound, the Dodgers were having a hard time getting anybody on base against the talented Corbin Burns. Barnes had already gotten a hit that game, which was impressive enough as it is. But when the Brewers finally pulled Corbin Burns, Austin Barnes came to the plate and did this. And you're scared to go get some concessions. You might miss something. High drive down the left field line, Austin Barnes! Austin Barnes! Dodgers lead 1-0! Yes, somehow Austin Barnes gave us his first home run of the season when we needed it most. That turned out to be the only run scored that game. The next day, Barnes was subbed into the game and got another hit, keeping his hot streak alive. For the rest of this year. Winds the ball to center field, and he follows up last night's big night with a base hit. Playing again on Saturday because of the doubleheader, Barnes came to the plate in a tied game and did this. Is squares again, lays it down, perfectly done this time, and it's tied! Bell's throw to the backstop. Up to third goes Hernandez, to second goes Barnes, who delivered. In three games, Barnes raised his average from 123 to 147, with his OPS going from 345 to 410. And yes, those are still horrible numbers. But nobody can deny that we got at least one and arguably two wins this week because of Austin Barnes. So without further ado, join me as we take Austin Barnes off the list of concern and welcome him with open arms onto the clutch list. Wasn't that nice? Joining Barnsey is Mookie Betts, who got 11 hits this week, including three home runs. Then we have Lance Lynn and Julio Urias. On the list of concern, we're obviously going to have to put Tony Gonsolin, although considering his season is almost definitely done, the concern is a bit pointless for the time being. Joining him is J.D. Martinez, not because he's been playing badly, but because he hasn't been playing a lot. J.D. has been dealing with a groin injury that has forced him to only play seven games this month. As a lot of people online have been saying, it's weird that the Dodgers haven't just put him on the IL to be safe and called up Michael Bush for a little bit. If they think he's ready to play again, then that's fine, but I feel like this is a good time to rest him for a week so he can be sharp by the playoffs. 
but that's about it. Overall, I still feel great about where the team is right now. Hilariously, they're about to go to Cleveland to face Noah Syndergaard on Tuesday, which will either end in the Dodgers destroying him or in Noah somehow pitching a perfect game. Then we'll be heading to Boston, where Mookie will be reunited with his former team, and the Dodgers will be reunited with Justin Turner. So at the very least, it'll definitely be a good week for the storyline side of baseball. And sometimes that's what we're all really here for. See you guys next week.